Hey what's up you guys, my name is Harrison and welcome to School of Swipe. So today we are going to be talking about complex numbers and yeah let's just get right into it. So this is the first video in a series of videos where I'll be talking about complex numbers. So here's what we are going to be talking about, you know it's not set in stone yet but generally this, these should be the series of videos. Um, so introduction, complex numbers, the first thing you need to know is this thing called an imaginary number and that is i. Um, and the definition of i is the square root of negative 1. Um, so yeah, so when, when we're talking about complex numbers, we always break them down into a real part and an imaginary part. So, um, so the real part is just, you know, any real number and then and the, the imaginary part is any real number but you put an i in front of it so we call it like when you put it together we call it a complex number zack so where with real numbers you use x and y uh, complex numbers we use zack and w so yeah it might seem a little bit confusing at first but just try to keep up yep that's it uh, so uh, arithmetic with complex numbers um, so generally what you can do is you can replace uh, Z with a plus b i. Like let's say they are asking you to find Z. What is Z? So um, we, what we do is just replace it, and then you solve for a and b. So it it works very much like you would do with uh, co comparing coefficients. So let's just see how it goes. So um, as you can see, that is this is your first equation that you have, which is Z over one plus three i equals two plus five i. So after substituting it, you have a plus b i. So after that, you know, you, you multiply the 1 plus 3i over to the other side and you expand the other side so we have something that looks a little bit like this. Okay, so what happens is, like I said, it's something like comparing coefficients. So we look at the real part, which is the part without any i. So the part without any i is minus 13 and then we have a equals to minus 13 and the part with the i, so we have bi equals to 11i. So if you think about it, therefore b equals to 11. So hence, you have the final answer which is z equals to negative 13 plus 11i. Alright? So, it's not that hard, is it? I mean, if, if you are familiar with comparing coefficients, you should be able to do this, no problem. Alright, so uh, now we're going to talk about the conjugate. Conjugate is basically, um, the, the real part stays the same, so if it's a, it's still a. But the imaginary part, you just put um, a negative sign in front of it. So, um, for example, if we have a conjugate where, uh, let's say, I have uh, z equals to one plus i. All right, then the conjugate of z will be one minus i. Sorry, excuse my handwriting. Um, but yeah, um, you just take the imaginary part and then if it's a positive, just flip it to a negative number. So uh, what what do we use a conjugate for? We are going to use it to resolve denominators or and it is very useful in solving polynomials. So um, let's show how to resolve a denominator. So uh, okay, so the key point that you have to remember when resolving your denominators, and this is a very important point point that you can use throughout um, complex numbers. You have to remember this uh, formula a plus b multiplied by a minus b equals to a square minus b square. You should be familiar with this by now. So um, and in fact you might have seen this pattern already when you have encountered certs. So um, certs are you know those uh, square root things. So what you can do is when you are dealing with those square root things is you multiply it by its conjugate. So again, its conjugate is you have the part that's not the cert, that's not being square root, and you have a plus square root 2, right? I mean, this is not com complex numbers at all, this is just certs. So when you have plus square root 2, then what you do is multiply it by the same thing, so instead of plus, it becomes a minus square root 2. So since you're multiplying it top and bottom, so it's technically the same thing, right? So um, after you multiply it top and bottom, yeah, um, at the bottom you have your a plus b multiplied by a minus b so that's how you get your a square minus b square which resolves into negative 1 and then your um, denominator is all gone so that's one thing that you can do so with the same thing that you did with search you can do the same thing in complex numbers so what you do is you get um, okay so here we have 1 plus 2i is in the denominator right so of from 1 plus 2i, we have the complex 
we have the conjugate of 1 plus 2i, which is 1 minus 2i. So we multiply that top and bottom. So if you look at everything that's in the denominator, it's an a plus b, a minus b thing. So we get a squared minus b squared. Okay, so here you have to look at it a bit carefully. So 1 squared is just 1, which is simple. And then we're, we're actually minusing minus 4. Okay, so 2, wait, 2 squared becomes 4, and i squared becomes minus 1. So we're minusing minus 4. So, there, so hence we get 1 plus 4, and you know the denominator is 5. And we, we've gotten rid of the complex number in the, in the denominator with the use of conjugates. Okay, so um, the next thing we're going to be talking about is polynomials, but I'm going to leave that to the next video. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Let me know if there's anything you want to see, whether it's like math or another topic or just a question in general, you can just post it down below. And yeah, I mean, if you found this video interesting, useful or whatever, just give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!